So hi guys, welcome to Stoomcast. So I've got the pleasure of announcing um, a good friend of mine, Shaz Khan. Shaz is a purple belt at the Grip House. Uh, oh, sorry, not purple. Brown belt, should I say, Shaz. So um, Shaz is a very, very highly decorated uh, jiu-jitsu competitor. I mean, Shaz has won numerous um, IBJJF comps. I mean, you're looking at things like uh, Munich, Berlin, Paris, European Masters, Spain, Amsterdam, Berlin, St. Petersburg, um, obviously Naga, more recently Naga, um, and there's obviously a lot that I haven't mentioned. I mean, if we were to sit here and mention um, all of Shaz's uh, competition wins, we'd be here for quite a while. So, um, but listen, Shaz, thank you very much for obviously taking the time to speak to me tonight. More than welcome, Stuart. Not a problem at all. Um, so for you then, Shaz, how did how did your journey begin? Um, so I've been training now at, at the Grip House for just shy of nine years. Um, been nine years next month. Uh, but I guess probably the, the seed was planted a, a lot earlier than that. Um, started judo when I was about four, and I just kind of you know, as per most kids at, at that kid, that sort of age, didn't take it massively seriously, but enjoyed it all the same. Did it till maybe about 14 or so, mm. 10 years or so of that, and um, yeah, I always enjoyed, even at, at that young kind of age, competing a lot, yeah. um, uh, it felt more like, you know, you're trying to win at something, yeah. rather than just, uh, like, I don't know, playing a game of tag or something with your, your mates, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that was probably, I, I don't know if I would have ended up doing jiu-jitsu at all if it hadn't been for uh, getting pushed into the judo when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, just as a way of kind of expending some extra energy in that but um, kind of drifted away from judo as I went through school played a lot of rugby quite well and a lot of football really badly <laughs> and um, as per most people that do martial arts actually it was pretty terrible at that but, yeah, yeah. Um, then yeah I got, got to the age where I felt like uh, doing something like I, I, I wouldn't even say that I was like definitely looking for a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or anything but I just kind of thought, well, yeah, I'll start getting back into a bit of judo and um, and see what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is all about. Mm -hmm. I suppose at that point, knew nothing at all about it, absolutely yeah. zero, other than maybe a couple of old videos from, from UFC days, basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, ancient stuff. But I happened to Google it, found uh, that I lived quite close to a gym and uh, didn't research it at all, just went along. Thought, well, it's the closest maybe two or three other ones and I would have just gone to it whichever one was closest at the time but just so happened that that was uh, that was a grip house and literally day one absolutely fell in love with it yeah. um, and that that was pretty much nine years ago to the day yeah. um, trained at the grip house almost exclusively I moved away to Edinburgh for a couple of years with work mm -hmm. and uh, spent a, a year training through there at cross combat uh -huh. um, which was good crack as well, really nice guys and they were very welcoming um, and they were totally cool with me going back to, to train at Grip House whenever I was through in Glasgow so that was a big plus yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know when you start something somewhere and uh, it, as much as cross combat was good it, it was never home for me, it, it, always, uh, it was always a Grip House and, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that kind of made me want to move back to Glasgow and um, just get through training it, regularly again at, at the Grip House and yeah. it's been good you know, it's, it's been a, a, a kind of life changing thing for me to be honest with you yeah yeah and a lot of people mention that I mean uh, it changes lives um, whether it's um, it, can, it can help with mental health it can help with uh, obviously fitness and things like that builds up confidence in people so for you what did it what did it do for you what did it give you Oof, I mean exactly what you mentioned there to be honest with you kind of always kept in, in reasonably good shape so mm -hmm. I, I mean I was in a decent physical condition anyway but, but honestly like see I just I, I, so many people will be able to relate to this but Jiu-Jitsu is just like that, an amazing stress reliever like um, I've, I've had some like challenging jobs uh, that, that was working long long hours uh, but you see when you get on to the mats afterwards it, nothing matters it's like, like just Everything else is just on mute. You can't really focus on anything other than jiu-jitsu while you're 
thing to do it because if you're thinking about something else then you're getting submitted <laughs> and <laughs> it's not that much fun if you're just repeatedly getting tapped yeah, yeah. so um, yeah it's it just makes everything else go on mute even if it's just for that period of time and then afterwards you just always have this uh, uh, feeling of relaxation I guess um, but yeah it's incredible for, for mental health mm-hmm. physical yeah, it's good to like keep you physically in shape it brings its own injuries as well there's no doubt about yeah, that yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of people will be like crippled in their I don't know late 40s if yeah. they're lucky <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's, it's, it's just I, I wouldn't have it any other way you know you could um, just live a kind of sedentary lifestyle avoid any sort of injuries or wear and tear but yeah. it's not really what it's all about but um, God, the, the mental health benefits from training mm-hmm. absolutely second to none yeah and obviously you're a you're a brown belt in jiu-jitsu uh, you mentioned uh, judo as well so what belt are you in judo at the moment uh, yeah my black belt in, in judo um, so I, I did not get my black belt as a kid but I, I competed a good bit as a kid but if you do get your black belt as a child yeah. then you redo it once you're uh, once you hit 16 yeah. um, so it's kind of different from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in that BJJ you can't get it as a kid mm. Judo they allow you to get it but then they take it off you you have to do it again as an adult yeah. but um, yeah when I started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu also was topping up my like classes with Judo as well so I was training that a couple of times a week um, and I've, I've never totally loved it the way I love Jiu Jitsu but um, certainly, a like white and blue belt felt there was a big like importance to have some sort of stand up game. So uh, a big priority for me was always like getting my black belt and you know, it felt like unfinished business. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I managed to do that. I, I did that I think the same week that I got promoted to blue belt in jiu jitsu. And mm-hmm. um, actually, uh, there was a weird rule that I think it's still the same rule actually. If you're a black belt in judo, then you have to compete as a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. You still do, yeah. So, yeah, and it's, um, I, I, to get your black belt in judo, when you're a brown belt, it means you, you have to win 10 fights yeah. at brown belt, um, and then that's you to get promoted to black belt. So, mm-hmm. I, I won eight, and then I stopped competing. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, I don't want to get that uh, black belt, and I'll have to um, compete against blue belts at jiu-jitsu. I'm happy enough just to, uh, being a white belt, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I kind of stopped uh, not training, just stopped competing at judo for uh, until I, I got promoted to blue belt in jiu-jitsu, and then that happened to coincide with a, a competition that I had agreed in that I think was probably at Kilmarnock Judo Hall, actually, was where uh, Marcus was teaching Brazilian jiu-jitsu at the time as well, Fantastic. and um, yeah, really nice yeah so I got my black belt there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously with the judo, I mean, the judo um, using it in jiu-jitsu again we've seen obviously other other judo guys doing really well kind of top level guys and stuff like that so for when you started competing in jiu-jitsu did you um, use a lot of the judo um, for like the takedowns and stuff like that was that always a kind of a main part of your your competitions in jiu-jitsu nah absolutely not to be honest with you I'd be totally lying if I said it was um, I, I would love it to have been because you, you see that some of the guys that are really good at judo just make people look very ordinary standing up yeah but uh, no I, I, to be honest with you i think the rule set in jiu-jitsu doesn't really benefit you to be that good at, at judo or, or even wrestling like it, aside from sport jiu-jitsu though um there's massive benefits in being able to, to have some sort of stand up but it, I, I i never really formed a big part of my game to be honest i guess as a a white belt, um, yeah, I would have been guilty of doing the kind of white belt dance at competitions where you know you're reluctant to go guard and you're trying to go for a takedown and stuff. But nah, I was uh, I, I was never a, a, a fantastic uh, like I didn't score many points for takedowns in jiu-jitsu tournaments. Put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, then I suppose the flip side of that was that probably from maybe blue belt onwards, I uh, started to develop a bit of a, a guard game and. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that, that's always been the, the thing I've enjoyed most, even yeah. about jiu-jitsu, just the playing off the back, and it's so it's very different from judo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I suppose it's very different from any other sport in that respect. But um, yeah, that, that's certainly where I've had most of my success in, yeah. in competitions. Yeah, and obviously you are as a part of the grip house. You're one of the kind of 
Um, certainly the main guys, whenever anybody kind of talks about the Grip House, uh, your name's always one of the first few names that people talk about. So, um, and again, the Grip House is a fantastic setup, as we know, um, from MMA to kickboxing, jiu-jitsu and things like that. So, um, and you mentioned earlier, obviously you felt for you, Grip House was, was always home. Um, so with uh, obviously all your kind of training partners that you've had over the years who's been for you kind of your most uh or what would i say the the, the kind of best training partner in regards to rolling for you do you have a one person that you like rolling with all the time or is it just whoever I, it is I, that's there? probably should be told that i wouldn't necessarily say that i, I like would pigeonhole myself into uh training with one partner more often than, than others. Yeah. Um, if it's coming up to a tournament, then I'll try and focus rolling with people of the same kind of size yeah. and, uh, and same tenure as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, no, do you know, for, for technique classes and, and things like that, I actually personally think that it's better to have a, a wide variety of different body shapes for, for doing jiu-jitsu. You know, it, things will work differently on people of different sizes and shapes. Yeah. I think that to a certain extent, if you're constantly, you know, partnered up with the same person, then you might be absolutely dynamite at hitting some specific technique mm -hmm. on a person in that shape with that kind of game. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily translate into hitting that same technique on someone a little bit bigger or someone with longer limbs or you know, so I, I couldn't honestly say that I've had any like one specific partner that um I would gravitate towards, but there's a good handful if um, it's, you know, if I'm training for a competition that I'll try and get as many rounds in as possible. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the good thing about the grip house. I mean, you you guys have um, a lot of guys, different shapes, sizes, uh, a lot of kind of belts all the way from white through to black belt, a lot of high level guys, a lot of high level competition guys as well, which maybe some gyms in Scotland don't have. Uh, the same pool of people that obviously the grip house has so um so it's obviously fantastic to see and again we see that in your competitions i mean we we mentioned some of the competitions there that you've won i mean you're probably in scotland one of the kind of main guys for ibjjf comps um i know you've kind of won i know your instagram said you were what on about 13 ibjjf golds yeah i think that's about right so far yeah um, hopefully there'll be more in the Horizon, but uh, yeah, that's their team today, anyway. Yeah, so and again, as we mentioned, some of them now, in regards to you, because IBJJF's a big step up. I mean, people don't realize that, yeah, local comps are good, but the IBJJF comps, there, there is a step up in level in regards to the guys that we're facing. Um, so, how do you prepare yourself for going to? Um, Maybe not just IBJJF comps, but maybe Nagas and things like that. Um, a, a, a routine, like absolutely, like strict routine. I, I think that um, yeah, maintaining a kind of a regular routine for preparation for comps mm -hmm. helps to take away a lot of the natural nervousness and anxiety um, that everybody gets. You know, I think if you say if, if you speak to somebody that's like, oh no, genuinely, I've never got nervous about competing. Yeah. They probably haven't competed because um, it is an, a nerve-wracking process, particularly um, when you're starting out. Um, but yeah, just try, trying to follow the same sort of routine uh, in my training. I'll, I'll usually try and peak, um, maybe say about ten days a week just before the comp, mm. um, looking for you know the absolute hardest rounds then, and then just gradually as we're, we're approaching the comp, kind of dialing back a little bit. Um, I, sometimes you'll, you'll you'll see people like still rolling at a hundred percent, you know, two days before a tournament. That's not the time to be trying to get better. That's the time to try to stay sharp and uninjured. Yeah. You know, it's a, your preparation work has to go in earlier than that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I, I suppose in terms of like how we would prepare, a lot about a lot of it is just about picking the right people to roll with at the the right time. Yeah, um, I, I'd say. Probably for me personally, um, I, I focus a lot on trying to do the things that I'm good at, mm -hmm. and I try to I probably paper over the cracks of the things that I'm not so good at. If there's something that I'm, I'm not good at, then 
I'll just try and get good at not ending up in that position. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of the preparation for me personally anyway yeah. involves about trying to hit things that are part of my A game yeah. in, in the in the run up to tournaments because ultimately that's what I'll be aiming to do as yeah. soon as we uh, you know step on the mat. I'm, I'm not going to be trying something fancy yeah. that I've not done before. Yeah. I'll be looking to do the stuff that's been working for me yeah. um, in the in the run up to tournament. Mm-hmm. And then what about uh, things like diet and stuff like that? So. Do you cut much weight for competitions, or are you just naturally walking around at the the competition weight? Honestly, I could you could have a whole podcast on that <laughs> subject alone. I, I, <laughs> when I uh, first started competing, so I guess I, I started my first jiu-jitsu competition six months after uh, after starting jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was cutting down to lightweight, uh, which was probably about a, a six. Roughly six kilos drop in body weight, mm-hmm. um, but that's huge for a um, you know same day weighing where you literally weigh in just maybe an hour before stepping on the mat. Yeah. Um, and yeah, do you know? I suppose it was at, at the time lack of experience. I was I thought that that's what I needed to do to um, you know get the results that I was trying to achieve. Yeah. Truth be told. <sighs> I don't know if it really benefits you though, to be honest. I always felt strong at the weight, but you also feel absolutely done in. Yeah. Um, so then I, I, I'd say my walking around weight has kind of always been roughly the same, but after maybe three, four years of competing at lightweight, mm-hmm. uh, moved up to middleweight, I think it was just because I got to the stage where I could not like put myself through cutting weight anymore. It was, yeah, I'd yeah. done it too many times. and. Uh, there was sometimes it was absolutely brutal as well. It's not a pleasant experience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I moved up to middleweight, and that that was uh, just a kind of natural walking about weight. I'd have to just you know monitor my weight, maybe say the week of the competition. Um, it would maybe involve a couple of smaller meals, but mm-hmm. nothing particularly crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I had just the same level of success. So I was like, actually, I didn't need to be dropping down to weight all this time. Mm-hmm. Um, then more recently I, I made the decision to move up to middle heavy uh-huh. that was about two years ago um, that was difficult as well not a natural weight for me to walk it out at uh, so pff, that was challenging <laughs> I, I, I got pretty fat quite quickly um, I, I'd finished uh, it was maybe around about December or so mm-hmm. uh, the last tournament of the year and I'd won that at uh, middleweight, then I was like, right, okay, my next tournament was going to be, I think it was Munich IBJJF, and this would have been February 2018. Yeah. So I had like two months, and I was like, I want to do this one at middle heavy. Uh, so I managed to put on the weight pretty quickly, but yeah. it was just fat, to be honest, at the time. But uh, yeah, the, I'd moved up to middle heavy deliberately. Um, I felt that I prefer fighting guys at all have a, a strength battle, uh, it kind of works to my favour. I, I, I like the style of passing of bigger guys, um, where the pressure passing low, um, and it leads into the things that I'm good at. Yeah. Uh, so I, I felt I had more success at, at middle heavy. Um, I, I never, ever enjoyed uh, fighting people that are like dynamic, good at changing direction, yeah. trying to pass on their feet, things like Tori Andrew passing, mm-hmm. just who has the, the kind of cardio to keep that up yeah, uh, yeah. it's never something I've, I've enjoyed so at middleweight you're kind of at that cusp where you'll get some guys that are you know trying to smash pass which I, I love mm-hmm. some guys that were dynamic and uh, you know trying to pass on their feet mm-hmm. which I would hate and then yeah middle heavy I felt it's, it's predominantly people looking to smash and yeah. that kind of um, that's the, the style of jiu-jitsu that I enjoy going against more so I thought yeah that's it yeah. Just yeah. But it has been tough to, to kind of stay at middle heavy. It's not <laughs> a, a natural way to have to eat a ton of food to try and maintain that kind of size. But yeah, yeah. And I kind of noticed that. I mean, I, I think I've rolled with you maybe once or twice over the years. Um, I think it was at the, the grip house. And my, the way my game was, it was all about kind of pressure and trying to push forward, always pushing forward, which I think you were a blue belt. You were a kind of, I think, if, uh, but definitely a blue belt at the time, and that played into your game because every time I came forward, 
you had something for me. Um, so is that again something that you've worked on over the years, obviously playing off your back and just letting the guys come forward and then capitalising on what they do? Yeah, 100%. Uh, and I think it's probably uh, it's probably just been being a little bit lazy, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I've, I've never felt that I've had the uh, the cardio to kind of push the, the tempo of, yeah. a, uh, of a match. Yeah. But that being said, I also think that really plays into um, my advantage for a, an actual tournament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes you'll be looking at maybe three, four matches uh, by the time you're uh, you know, in the final. Yeah. And if the other person has that kind of high tempo game, you know that they're knackered. Yeah. Like before you've stepped on the match, you know that they're absolutely the, the, the it, yeah. output that day has been a lot higher than yours. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I've always been uh, at, at my best, just kind of playing off my back, letting the, the other person uh, uh, not necessarily control the pace, mm -hmm. but letting the other person uh, kind of attack, letting them to look like they're trying to pass and then trying to take advantage of that situation. Definitely, definitely. And then, um, as he obviously had a, a, a lot of success, certainly the IBJJF. So, when did you, what belt were you when you first did your first IBJJF? And where was that? I was blue belt. Uh, and that was in Lisbon. Um, truth be told, I, I probably, I would have said that the thing that made me want to get my toe into the water, uh, kind of at, at tournaments that size, um, there was a handful of people in the gym that was Owen Campbell, Kieran Reid, uh, T as well, that were just starting to compete at some of the IBJJF tournaments as well. Mm -hmm. And they, they, at that point, I'd say they were probably, I think they'd maybe started competing at that level maybe six, eight months before me. Yeah. But that kind of inspired me. Um, so uh, I don't even know if I would have necessarily if it hadn't been for, for those guys doing it. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that, that definitely inspired me. I'd see them meddling and be like, well, okay, I, I can do this as well. And yeah. Yeah, so the, the first one was actually uh, the, the Euros in Lisbon. And um, this must have been maybe 2015, roughly. I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. But um, I'd set my target, like, just in my head of, okay, if I, if I don't get submitted, and if I win one match, then I'd be pretty happy with the result. Um, First match choked the guy in maybe a minute. I was like, okay, that went better than I was anticipating. <laughs> but yeah, yeah then I, I just try and always treat the next match uh -huh. like the, the first one as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, ended up, uh, I, I won my first three that day and uh, I took bronze, um, lost in the, the semi final by an advantage. Mm -hmm. but uh, And then that, that guy won the final by submission of some sort but yeah. that, that was a good day I, I didn't have any expectations of, of meddling at all mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what the, the standard difference would be like um, and yeah I was pleasantly surprised that I, actually all the guys in the gym are really good and um, yeah. it kind of legitimises what you've been doing yeah. when you you realise okay the, the, the stuff that I'm learning is actually working against people that are trying to learn the same sport as well mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that, but yeah, that, that going to the the, the Euros in Lisbon, um, man, I definitely caught the, the bug for competing yeah. tournaments that size. Yeah. It kind of a little bit maybe ruined local tournaments for me. Um, yeah, I used to like compete a lot at local tournaments prior to that, but I, I, they're absolutely brilliant as well, and they definitely serve the purpose. Um, but it did kind of room to be locally a wee bit just uh, <laughs> stepping up onto the mat with hundreds of people there as well yeah. and don't get me wrong like only a fraction of them are going to be watching any one mat at a time it's yeah. just maybe yeah. 10 mats going on but just the atmosphere in the place I, I got a big buzz from that and yeah, yeah I've, I've loved competing at, at tournaments that size ever since yeah I mean IBJJF ones are great and you are right it kind of it does ruin the local competition somehow because um, as the, especially the Euros, I mean, your first competition in the IBJJF going to the Europeans um, and obviously the Europeans is kind of one of the biggest competitions in the world. Um, so I mean, I've been fortunate that I've been able to go a couple of times, not got the results I wanted, but um, as I said, it won't stop me going back and keep going and going and going until... Do you know what I mean I get to where I want to be so 
but you are right, it does definitely ruin the, the local competition experience. Um, and again, I know I've met you a couple of times on the road down in London um, when we've been at the British and things like that. We've kind of seen each other. So, um, And you do, I mean, the one thing that I notice always about you at any competition I've ever seen you at, you're very, very, even though you mentioned nerves, you're very, very relaxed, you're smiling, you look like you're having a good time. Um, is that what you feel when you're there, or is it is there a bit of nerves and things like that there waiting to go on? Now, it is, like, genuine. Like, I'm very relaxed now. Mm. Uh, but certainly, initially, no. Um, I, I didn't feel relaxed at all. Yeah. But I, I absolutely love the, the mental aspect of, of competition. Not necessarily just specific to jiu-jitsu, because I think a lot of it relates to kind of applicable to almost any sport. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm, I absolutely adore the, the mental aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And um, very much, I think you kind of have to fake that you're relaxed and confident <laughs> yeah. before you actually are relaxed and confident. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been a, a good, I don't know, 250 matches now. So now it is actually, I am relaxed and confident. But certainly, there would have been times when I would have looked like I was relaxed, but absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, you kind of you deal with that just by rationalising it. You know, any nerves or emotions that, or you know, stress that you have about what can happen, so does the other guy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes you kind of just need to embrace that and, and capitalise on it. Um, but that just comes with experience, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what for you? Um, has been your best competition that you, you that you've been at that you've maybe enjoyed the most, uh, or you've won gold, silver, bronze, or anything like that. What's been your your favourite one? A lot of like really enjoyable and memorable moments that uh, that competition has given me. So in, on paper, the the best one was definitely um, the Euro Masters uh, last year. Was that um, middle heavy Masters won purple belt and yeah I, I knew I had a good chance of winning it um, I, I'd taken bronze the year before and I, I felt I had a, a, like I, I would have been disappointed if I hadn't been on the podium yeah. but that day everything just went perfectly mm-hmm. and I've always been a big believer that for any of the big tournaments you're maybe looking at say a two thirds of the, the people in it have legitimately got a chance of winning it Mm-hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're better than them just because you beat them on that day. You, whoever wins it needs to have a little bit of luck going their way as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, that that day everything just went absolutely perfectly for me. Yeah. And I, I think probably I did get my luck as well. The, the first match, um, I, I'd won five two against a, a Brazilian guy from Alliance, mm-hmm. and I was absolutely exhausted afterwards. <laughs> it, it's weird that uh, I, I don't enjoy matches going the distance at all um, I like just always struggled cardio wise and I was dying after this match four rounds were on fire and um, really really thought like I've, I've like you know for want of a better term blown my wad I'm, I'm not going to manage to beat somebody else now I'm, I'm cooked but there was a huge weight <laughs> between the first and the second match yeah. um, and so that, that was the luck that I got that day and I, I think on another day if I'd been you know 10-15 minutes and back on the mat mm-hmm. probably would have lost yeah, um, yeah. Then second match, uh, another Brazilian guy. I can't remember what team from, and he's like so close to mounting me. Um, I'm in this horrible like three quarter guard. But I've got one hand in his collar, one hand round the back, and just by the fingertips, mm-hmm. trying to rag on this choke. And I, I know the position of the the grip is like exactly where it needs to be. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I've got like uh, this is either. He's, he's going to die or I'm going to get past and mounted in one swift <laughs> movement. I just heard that gurgling noise and he was unconscious. So I was like, right, hey, right. okay, he's, he's done. Yeah. Then third match was quick as well. That was uh, a kind of Spanish guy. I think he was a local from Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty straightforward armbar Roma plat I think that I'd been working on. Yeah. In the final, I'd been watching this other guy, the full the full day. Um, I'd been fortunate enough that because of the size of the competition, the big gaps between matches, I was able to spend a lot of time watching the rest of the division, yeah. seeing who was progressing. 
this guy was an absolute beast. He'd been on fire the full day. Yeah, yeah. And um, I even remember saying to one of the guys that I was there with, um, Neil Duffy, I was like, fuck, I don't know if I can beat this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was just, I, as soon as I caught myself saying that, I was like, right, put that sort of thought away. Yeah, um, if yeah. I go into that thinking that, then I definitely can. Yeah. Um, then, yeah, I was fortunate enough that I started telling myself, okay, I've seen some of his matches and he's been absolutely on fire. Mm. He's been working hard. He's been really be- pushed by a few other very legit guys. Yeah. And that whole day, I've done maybe like six minutes of jiu-jitsu. But, um, this guy, had, I don't think he tapped anyone. He was like, putting quite a bit of time on the mat that day. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I feel fresh. He can't feel as fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he just, I, I also knew that he was going to start passing high uh, on his feet anyway, yeah. but he wasn't going to stay that way for very long. The, the rest of the matches, if he hadn't been able to pass on his feet, he'd started trying to pass on his knees really quickly. Mm-hmm. So I knew I just had to like stabilise pull guard quickly, get him into a position that he wasn't just going to blast past immediately. Yeah. I knew he would drop his knees, and he, he did. Tried to pass low and uh, just straight into a choke. So right, right. That, that was probably, I'd say on paper, that was like my and best competition um, it was certainly the, the biggest one it was the first four star IBJJF tournament I'd won mm-hmm. um, coach was there Gary Christie and his coach Roberto Atala um, and, and loads of the guys that I regularly train with were there as well so yeah, that, yeah. that all made it a, a bit more meaningful it does I mean but, especially if Roberto Atala is there watching you um, that's uh, that's a big thing as well um, yeah Definitely, definitely. And the other guy um, was from GF team in Berlin, mm-hmm. and um, I, I'd been over there training with uh, Gabriel Vigno mm-hmm. just like earlier on that year. Yeah. And uh, Gabby was there cornering the other guy, and uh, then I, I went over to shake his hand afterwards. He said, oh, I remember you being in at the gym. He was really complimentary, and uh, so that was a nice touch. He's just like a super nice guy as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, it was yeah, flattering that he would remember who I was when I'd just been. Dropping into his gym to, to train, <laughs> right, but right. yeah, that that was that was memorable. But truth be told, like I, I suppose even more so than that, um, the one that I, I didn't win in uh, in Lisbon at, at Blue Belt, just taking bronze, mm-hmm. there was still something special about that. There's been so many tournaments since then that have won gold, but prior to that as well. But there'll always be something special about that tournament for me because my expectations were so far surpassed that. Yeah. Genuinely didn't think I was going to get anywhere near the podium, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I put everything into training for that tournament. I was uh, like, I'm super, super tight. So for me to make the the transaction of buying flights to Portugal, mm. paying for somewhere to stay for five nights, <laughs> and paying for the entry, I was like, okay, if I'm doing this, I'm absolutely giving it everything I've got. So yeah, yeah. The, the preparation for that, I remember just really, really grueling. Yeah. At that point, I was still uh, I was living in Edinburgh, getting up about four thirty in the morning. They would start taking the, the dogs out at that time. Mm-hmm. Start work at six thirty. Um, I needed to do the early shift so I could finish at four thirty. Then drive through to Glasgow, mm-hmm. train for a couple hours, then drive through to the far side of Edinburgh, get home about ten thirty, mm-hmm. go to bed, get up the next day at four thirty, and do it again. Wow. Um, so for me personally. That tournament, although I didn't win it, was one of the ones that meant the most because I, I, I literally had given everything that I could have to, yeah. to, you know, perform as best as possible there. Yeah, yeah. And again, a lot of people don't realise that. I mean, a lot of people see jujitsu guys, especially when they're going to these big comps and they see you you winning the medal and uh, let's say you've had two, three, four fights um, and they've maybe only lasted, uh, I've seen in a lot of cases, your fights only last a couple of minutes usually because you've usually got them done and dusted within a couple of minutes. So, And a lot of people don't realise how much people uh, actually put into these comps. I mean, you mentioned it, you, you could be training for a couple of months for an up-and-coming comp. And as you say, getting up at half four in the morning and not getting to bed till half ten at night and being on the go all day. So, um, so and again, you've done that and numerous times. I mean, you mentioned, what, around about 250 fights you've had? Yeah, about that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's um, a, a lot of build up, a lot of training going into these two hundred and fifty fights. Yeah, there, there, there was a quote that, that you 
brought into my mind there actually about you know the, the preparation mm-hmm. and what goes into actually a successful outing at a tournament. Yeah. Um, I think it was Serena Williams. I, I read this quote recently, mm-hmm. and it was something like, uh, you know, I, I don't always feel like training, mm-hmm. but I never feel like losing. Yeah. Um, and I think that yeah, that, that's that, that's certainly not unique to myself. That like everybody feels that way. Nobody turns up to try and lose, but yeah. Um, yeah, the, the people that will be making it onto the top of the podium in any of the divisions are yeah. people that are you know willing to kind of put that extra graft and not you know turn it up when they don't necessarily want to, or you know yeah. that make yeah. plans around jujitsu rather than do jujitsu around other plans and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And I know for me when I when I first started out as a white belt, as I said, I think you were a blue belt at the time, and then. Obviously, you just started your journey, and I'd always followed you and obviously some of the guys from the grip house whenever you went to competitions and things like that. And then, for me, when I first started competing, and then just kind of traveling everywhere competing, so I kind of looked up to you guys, thinking, well, and at the time I was, and I remember me and you had a conversation at the time, saying, talking about IBJJF medalists, and um, I was the only IBJJF medalist at GB. Um, and you were mentioning, well, at the grip house, we've got, fucking, we've got wood, we've got quite a few of them. Um, so you were always the guys that I looked up to. Um, obviously seeing you going out and doing IBJJF comps, and obviously Gary, obviously the success Gary's had over the years as well. Um, obviously more recently Cogsy going out and stuff like that. So, so I'd always try to kind of, um, whenever I went to an IBJJF comp, thinking, well. I mean, I want to do it as well, the same as you guys were doing it. So, and I did. I had a little bit of success, um, obviously, in some of the comps I've been at, IBJJF comps. I'm not, I'm not thirteen at the moment, but I think I'm two at the moment. So, uh, I'll catch up in nothing. I'll get there. I will get there. Yeah. So, I'll, well, I'll not get up. You'll be twenty six. I'll be ten or whatever. <laughs> so, um, but no, no. I said I always, always enjoy, and I always remember saying. I think I met Cogsy in Lisbon. Um, I think it was a couple of years ago and we were kind of having a chat about it and I always said, well, look, I, I always enjoy seeing when you guys going out to competitions and going out and winning because um, you're doing it for, obviously, yourselves, you're doing it for your gym in Scotland. Um, so, and it's a massive thing, certainly in Scotland, when anybody comes back with an IBJJF medal. Um, and I say, you've done it quite a few times. Um so I'd say for me, I look up to you, and I'm pretty sure other guys out there look up to you as well. So it's definitely good having you going out there and doing that, and giving us something to for us to achieve as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's kind of perpetual, um, mm-hmm. and that the, the the people I looked up to were the likes of Kieran Owen mm-hmm. and uh, and Lovey was competing quite a bit at that point yeah. as well, and he, he was there cornering me at the first. Uh, tournament I did at, at Lisbon and uh, he was competing the next day, mm-hmm. came out just to, to help me and um, you know came out to the, the, the tournament a day earlier and didn't yeah. need to turn up at the, the stadium to, to call me but that made a big difference and when I went out to watch him he won his division and that was one of the, the most memorable sporting events that honestly were the best things about Jiu Jitsu was watching Lovey win that, uh, yeah. that division in Lisbon and yeah, there's plenty of other people at the gym that I look up to as well. Mm-hmm. I've really enjoyed seeing Dean get back into competing recently. Yeah. Done one of the tournaments at SGI, and he's been around there since well before I have. And, yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, that you know, from myself competing, maybe there's been one or two other people that have kind of dipped their toes into it that potentially wouldn't have otherwise. And yeah. um, it's it's all cyclical. But the more people that do it, I think there's a a snowball effect and mm-hmm. um, kind of success breeds success as well and that yeah. you've got other people training for the same tournament mm-hmm. then those are the kind of go-to rounds that you're looking for in the, the run-up to the tournament because they're you know that they're going to be coming to kill you because they're also trying to achieve the same goals at, at the same time as well yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah it feels that at the moment anyway that standing in the gym is just absolutely ridiculous and, yeah. and don't get me wrong everybody obviously is always going to say that about their own gym but just now I think it's now the last six weekends in a row we've had people out competing mm-hmm. in four or five six countries maybe Yeah. Um, and we've still got yeah, another couple of weekends in a row where 
I don't even know when the next time is that we, we don't have a weekend with someone in the gym competing. Yeah. And um, well, you, you mentioned fire. Cogs a couple of times there as well. And yeah. He's just been absolutely on fire recently. Yeah. He just won the uh, Euro Masters uh, mm -hmm. like 10 days ago in Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, absolutely smashed a couple of his opponents. Mm -hmm. His final put the guy unconscious, some Russian guy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, absolutely delighted for him. And yeah. He's been a, a absolute like example of just hard work and graft. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he would admit not necessarily like a natural, uh, and I would certainly put myself into that category as well, but mm -hmm. um, man, he's a tough round now. So, yeah. Yeah. Cogsy's, Cogsy's good. I mean, whenever we have open mats at MMBJJ, Cogsy pops over um, all the time, and he'll stay. Um, he'll be on the mat from the moment everybody starts rolling to the moment everybody leaves. Um, and it could be two, three hours, um, and he'll stay on the mat the whole time. He'll maybe have a couple of rounds. He'll sit out, but the majority of the time he's on the mat. And again, I've been quite fortunate over the last kind of couple of years just to see Cogsy progress um, throughout Jiu Jitsu. Um, just seeing him as a couple of years ago when I seen him at the uh, the Euros, and then obviously seeing what he's been doing since that has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, so. Yeah, it's definitely a, a fantastic pedigree coming out of the grip house. Um, as you said, a lot of guys competing, not just in jiu-jitsu, but obviously the, the other things you guys do as well. So, Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, uh, as I said before, everyone's going to say the same thing about their own gym, but you know, from the moment I'd walked into that place, I just felt like home, really, really welcoming, unpretentious, and uh, with just an incredible work ethic at the gym yeah. Um, and yeah it's uh, some place it is I mean obviously you know yourself I mean when you walk in a gym you, you know that feeling straight away that this is the place for me or um, you might go have to go to a couple of gyms to get that feeling but it's, as I say for you the moment you walked in you kind of felt it straight away so um, so definitely as I said obviously a lot more we're going to see from the grip and I know you guys have a team that's in the SGI, the the square go, as James calls it. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a, a good tournament. Um, as, as the standard in that team is really high as well. And we've got Cam, who's absolutely uh, just so good. Like, uh, I don't know if you've rolled with him any time recently, but he is just on another level just now. Yeah. Um, Dan Holt is, I, I believe, also competing in... Um, he's just incredibly unorthodox. Like he, he just makes you think jujitsu doesn't work. Um, <laughs> he, he does things that shouldn't work, and yeah. they do. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a, a great round as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's Jack, Graham McQuiston, and whoa, cannot remember who number five Dean? is as well. Apologies Dean? to whoever that is. Yeah, but, no, it's, um, it's Dean. Yeah, it's it's going to be a good the... tournament. Dean's the fifth guy, apparently. Um, ah, okay. So I was kind of the only reason I know that I was looking at I was I seen the um, James had been posting up over the last kind of week or so. So and I kind of looked at the team and um, I, well, I looked at all of the teams and all the teams. Um, I mean, there's some some of the top guys in Scotland are going to be in them eight teams. Um, so it's going to be fantastic to watch. But yeah, no, no, I've seen Dean's name was in it as well. So um, so yeah, it'll be good to see Dean getting on the mat and getting in about it again. I say we don't see much of Dean, um, but we, we've seen him at a few, a couple of SGIs now. So um, so it'll be good to see Dean on the mats. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, SGI is absolutely brilliant event as well. I would, I would encourage anybody that, that listens to this that, that does jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. to, uh, to get involved behind Um must admit, when it was first announced, I was very much, uh, I was sceptical. I was yeah. like, is there really any need? Is it not just the same people that are going to be competing yeah. at tournaments that, you know, you can go to and watch free of charge anyway? But yeah. Yeah. absolutely loved it. I, I think I worked at the second one, I think it was mm -hmm. table staff at SGI2, yeah. and uh, I was like, oh, I want a piece of this, definitely. <laughs> um, different atmosphere from competing, because um, you, you're the only match on at the time yeah. so it's a kind of different like a, a different anxiety that you get because yeah. you, you know that everybody has just got their eyes on you at that point but <laughs> yeah. you, you, you take yourself away from that um, 
it's a, a great platform yeah. to, uh, to be able to kind of showcase what you've been working on. Yeah, yeah. And then we, we spoke to James recently, um, and one of the questions I put to James was, uh, in his years, um, obviously going throughout the years, all the competitions he's done and things like that, who's been his kind of most favourite person to watch? And James, he, he thought about it for a bit, but he came out with you. He said, obviously, the, the kind of the most favourite person he's had or the, the person that's kind of improved maybe over the years, the, the best has been yourself. Um so how do you feel I've about heard that? rumours of that. I'll, uh, I'll need to buy my pint when I see him next time for that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm obviously flattered by it because uh, James will have seen a heck of a lot of people doing jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah. He's um, been kind of around the sport since well before I have anyway. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's you know, obviously flattering to hear any you know, compliments from people of that kind of tenure and, and experience. Yeah, yeah. And then... Over the years, I mean, obviously you, you're saying you've been doing it for nine years, so in regards to when you started, um, or maybe even the first couple of years since you started, what do you think the uh, the difference, what, what do you think about jiu-jitsu now compared to what it was when you first started? Well, when I first started, the white belt divisions were like, I mean, there was two MMA fighters, there was people of, you know, almost UFC level. Yeah. Um, there was, like, Kieran Malone, who had been uh, wrestling for Scotland, competing yeah. at White Bell. The, the White Bell divisions were full of absolute killers. Yeah. And, you know, if you were getting near a medal at a local White Bell division, then you were, you, you were <laughs> doing pretty well. <laughs> um, and then the Blue Bell divisions, like, were, they were just unthinkably good. Yeah. Um, and there was no purple belt, so there was like maybe two or something that were mm -hmm. actually turning out to compete. Yeah. Um, but now we've just seen so many people that like the, the purple the belt divisions at local comps are really busy now. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few brown belts usually competing locally as well. Yeah. Blue and white belt divisions are absolutely stacked. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the standard, not just in terms of the standard of the people competing, mm -hmm. um, but standard in the gyms has grown, the, the quality of the tournaments, the organisation is just so much better now as well. Yeah. Um, I've been really impressed with the, like, the, the last few um, tournaments in Scotland that I've been involved in, that yeah. they've run absolutely brilliantly. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, I don't know, five, six years ago, probably couldn't say that, but mm -hmm. everybody has just upped their game, whatever they're involved in, whether they're organising tournaments or whether they're, you know, actually out there competing or they're, they're just training it feels like the, the standard has just grown and yeah. there's a lot more people involved as well now you go back to when I'd started I guess there was Grip House Marcus's mm -hmm. Battlefield I don't know if that was maybe it I don't know there, there might have been some other smaller gyms but yeah. um, every single gym now is just much bigger and, and there's there's more gyms as well there's a lot more people training Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah it's I think definitely just more people and uh, a higher standard as well now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. higher belts. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, everything I think is progressing in the right direction. Yeah, and a good thing as well. I mean, we are. Um, I mean, I didn't know this until I'd left GB, but jujitsu is quite a close knit community. Um, obviously, when I was at GB, we we weren't allowed to mingle. Obviously, due to politics that everybody knows about. So. Um, but when I moved out of GB and went to Marcus's, I mean, I kind of noticed it firsthand that, do you know what I mean, everybody trains with everybody. Um, do you know what I mean? You could be, do you know what I mean? You can, you can go somewhere and uh, you can go to Aberdeen, you'll know someone, do you want to train? Yeah, not a problem. You can go to Edinburgh or wherever in Scotland and you'll you'll meet someone that you know and you'll be able to train with them. Um, so again, is that something that you've kind of noticed as well throughout your nine years? Absolutely. I would say that that's something that has been present since well before I've been involved as well. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely, like, totally embrace that as well. Like, yeah, my, my team's my team and it's the only place I would ever want to, yeah. like, call home. But if I'm away somewhere, then I'll have a key with me and I'll be chopping into whatever I can. Yeah. Um, just recently, I've been through in Edinburgh for a few days and I've spent a couple of days training in CBA. Mm -hmm. um, we made to feel really welcome and I, you know, I've been up to Aberdeen, trained in there, yeah. a few other gyms in Edinburgh that I've trained at. And, um, whenever I go to another country, if it's not 
purposely to compete. If I'm there for a little bit of time, longer than the tournament itself, then guaranteed I'll be dropping into whichever local gym will have me as well. Yeah. And uh, also, it feels like every week, pretty much, mm-hmm. there'll be someone dropping into our gym, whether it's you know from another kind of localish gym in Scotland or someone just on the holidays has yeah, yeah. heard of those that wanted to drop in. But I, I think that that's one of the best things about jiu-jitsu. It's, it's such a, a welcoming community for people to go and train at other places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't mean that in a, like, constantly dipping in and out of different gyms. Like, I think it's great to have somewhere that is your, your home base, but mm-hmm. if you're away for a couple of days somewhere else, then if you've got two choices and one of them is not trained, yeah. then the other choice is always going to be the better one. Yeah, yeah. And I know when, when I've been on my travels, I mean, my, the, the favourite place for me when I... Um, was on my travels with Robert Drysdale's in Vegas. Um, went and trained there. Trained there for a few nights while I was over there. Um, and absolutely fantastic gym. Robert Drysdale's a again fantastic coach. Um, so for you, where's where has been your favourite place that you've been that you've trained at? Uh, there's been a, a few good ones. I mean, more, most recently I was at uh, 3D training in uh, in Tallinn in Estonia. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the journey to St. Petersburg, for the tournament there, it was going to work out a lot better for me to go via Estonia. Yeah. When I say better, I mean cheaper. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I um, dropped into the, the gym there. And in terms of the actual the, the facility itself yeah. was ahead of anything I've ever seen. Um, and I've been to, you know, some pretty expensive places for, for training, but yeah. there, that place there was just, the facility they've got in that space, the gym, mm-hmm. the sauna on site was just incredible. But favourite places would be Carpe Diem in Tokyo. Uh, that, that was pretty beautiful. I was training there on my honeymoon. Um, <laughs> so that, that was, yeah, I've been blessed that way as well. I'm a bit lucky that my wife's is understanding. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but Marcelo's obviously in, in New York, like absolutely beautiful setup and the quality of the coaching there was just superb. Um, then unity is it's like the kind of yin and yang and mm-hmm. Marcelo's is like the like the, the god on your shoulder yeah. unity is like the devil the place is absolutely manky right. horrible little gym yeah. but it's full of killers and every round they're, they're going for the death yeah. um, it, it was, I absolutely loved training at unity as well I, I think that if I had been in New York for longer that's probably somewhere I would have liked to spend more time yeah. Yeah. I only managed to drop in like the, the day of uh, my flight home right. so I, I looked up on the uh, online and it was on the timetable as a kind of Sunday open mat and I was like alright cool this is probably going to be pretty relaxed mm. no absolutely not <laughs> um, it was the polar opposite of what you would think of as a, a Sunday open mat yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah brilliant session the, yeah. my old brother's walking about it as well right. um, yeah so th- I, I'd say if I had to pick one place that I, I could go back and train again, mm-hmm. probably say Carpe Diem, but mostly that would be because it's uh, it's become a lot bigger and you know there, there's more guys there that are training now that, that are at an even better standard than mm-hmm. when I was last there, so yeah. I'd like to go back there one day, definitely. Yeah, and then if you, obviously everybody in Jiu Jitsu has got a bucket list, so who's the the one person on your bucket list that you would want to train with, uh, and you will probably. I mean, one day you will. Um, but who's that one person that you want to train? You know, I I, I couldn't pick a name. I I, I genuinely, I, I couldn't say that I do have a like a, some sort of idol or anything within the sport. Um, you know, I, the, for me, the the best people that I could train with are the people that know my game. They know the, my strengths and weaknesses, and those are the people at my own gym. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, as much as I, I love training when I'm away, I, I think that I do most of my learning when I'm, you know, oh, just really crafting at, at the grip house. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've seen you again more recently at a local comp. Uh, uh, your daughter, um, you brought your daughter to a competition. 
My son. Oh, sorry, your son. <laughs> yeah. Apologies, Shaz. Yeah. You brought your son. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. They're at that, he's at that age where you can't tell and he won't be offended, so <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, more recently, I think it was at, um, it was over in Scotchton. Um, you came over and you had your son with you. Um, obviously, your son at that time could only have been maybe a couple of months old at the time, I think. So I think it was just fresh. I think it was maybe two weeks or so yeah, of it. So. But, um, yeah, he, he's about eight and a half months now. Uh-huh. And um, I guess it's a game changer, don't get me wrong. It yeah. is. But, um, yeah, I, I still managed to, to set time in for training. I, I think yeah. it was maybe last week or the weekend before I had to take him in with me and he just playing about at the side of the mats for a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, so that was good times. But I'd, I'd love to think that one day you'll be involved as well, but at the same time, you don't want to end up as one of those like pushy parents that don't think you should do this. <laughs> because that's always going to result in uh, in them not enjoying it and, and not wanting yeah. to do it. So, yeah. so I'll be yeah. open to him training it, but you can't really force their hand, can you? Yeah, so one day we're going to have, hopefully one day we're going to have big shaz and mini shaz. Uh, <laughs> yeah. on the mats yeah. uh, <laughs> and again I know obviously my, my son uh, obviously trained I think he trained up at the grip for a little bit as well and again again one of my kind of proudest moments in Jiu Jitsu was uh, we both went to a competition um, we both fought in the same competition he won a gold I won a gold and we were there on the podium together getting pictures taken together so it was a, a beautiful feeling uh definitely a, a a very very good feeling um and i'd say one day shaz it's going to be you um I never know that that would be absolutely class i, I like I, I can imagine now having become a dad how that would feel i think yeah. that would be an absolute buzz yeah yeah and then obviously the final question for me shaz now i asked everybody this question again it's a difficult question um but without jiu-jitsu, let's take judo out of the way as well. Um, what would you be doing instead of judo and jiu-jitsu? Do you know, uh, I don't know. I've always loved sports. I've always um, loved the competitive competitive aspect of sports. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, to be honest. Like, cause, uh, jiu-jitsu, I, I've kind of, I feel like I've taken to another level from any other sport that I've done before and, yeah. you know, made a, a lot of sacrifices that I haven't ever found any other sport that I've been willing to make for. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd probably, truth be told, would probably be at that kind of age where I'd be maybe playing five sides once a week or something <laughs> and, and just going to the gym to do some bicep curls. Yeah. Which maybe isn't that different from what I do when I'm in the gym anyway. Oh, but, right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I, I I couldn't think of um, how much of a difference, you know, it's difficult to quantify how much of a difference jiu-jitsu makes to somebody's life. But if they really embrace it properly, then it, you can't help but benefit from it. Yeah. I mean, that in like a, a mental and, and physical aspect as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then anything, final fo- thought from you then, Shaz, so anything you, um, about yourself that maybe some of the guys don't know about you? Um, you're gonna know, hide this. You're gonna, you're gonna hide this because if it's a jujitsu thing, you're like, I'm not giving any of my secrets away. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. No, in terms of that, no, you can find it on the mat. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think I've got any kind of secrets to, to give away. Yeah. Um, I'm struggling with a couple of injuries just now, I guess. Not not everybody knows, but yeah. I was meant to be competing in the European Masters just uh, what, 10 days ago or so, and yeah. I, I fractured my wrist just the week before. Right. Um, yeah. First session back after winning in St. Petersburg, and yeah. Um, yeah, I fractured it in the gym. So that, that's been a bit annoying. But uh, I, next up, I'm scheduled to compete against Mark Young, mm-hmm. uh, one of the SGIs in August. So yeah. that's kind of what I'm. I'm, I'm focusing on just making sure that I'm uh, fully uninjured and, and good to go for that. And, and my intention, because I know that I'm going to lose this little bit of uh, time that I would be competing over the summer with uh, waiting for my, my rest to heal, my intention is to have a, yeah. a really busy second half of the, well, final third of the year, yeah. with as many tournaments as, as possible then. But yeah. in terms of like secrets that people don't know about me, I don't know. I'm an open book. I'm not hiding anything, but I don't <laughs> have any secrets to, to announce either. To, 
So, so you're you're good at half guard. You're good at all these guards. So, guys, if you want a if you want a shot at Shaz, you know where he is. <laughs> so, uh, he's got nothing to tell anybody. So, <laughs> but, um, hey, if anybody wants a shot, this is the time. I'm like Jamie Lannister, just now with one hand. So, right. <laughs> um, yeah, oh. come and uh, count how many times you can tap me while I'm flailing around like an idiot, basically. But, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, Shaz, it's been absolutely brilliant to talk to you. It's fantastic to hear your story. As I say, for me, I'm definitely a fan because, as I said, I've, um, I've been able to watch you in person uh, at a couple of different comps as they did in London. So, uh, for me, you're definitely the, the person that I looked up to um, and still look up to. So, uh, And I'm always happy seeing whenever you're out there at a competition, uh, standing on the podium with a gold medal, even double gold in some cases. So... Um, so yeah, listen. Thanks very much for everything that you've you've done for Jiu Jitsu, or that you are doing for Jiu Jitsu in Scotland. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Well, listen. Thanks again, Shaz. Um, we'll speak to you soon. Okay. You too. Take care, buddy. Take it easy, buddy. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, so guys, that was Shaz Khan. Shaz is a brown belt at the Grip House. Uh, I said absolutely fantastic competitor. I mean, Shaz is. Uh, we mentioned during the call there 13 times IBJJF champion um, and again for those of you who don't know IBJJF is the pinnacle of Jiu Jitsu in regards to competitions and so on so uh, this is the ones that everybody wants to win yeah everybody wants to win every comp but IBJJFs are just a little bit more special um, and as you hear Shaz there I mean um, obviously won a number of competitions I said I'd be here all day if I was to rattle off everything so um, it's fantastic to see uh, what he's done for Jiu Jitsu and building the profile of Jiu Jitsu in Scotland um, and again he's going to continue doing that over the years and then I said in years to come we're going to see many Shaz um, obviously his son um, and we're going to see him hopefully on the podiums in the future as well which I'm, I'm sure if he gets into Jiu Jitsu that that will happen as he's, he'll have a good mentor and his dad um so yeah thank you very much Shaz, for taking the time to speak to us um so listen guys thanks for listening and um, we'll see you on the next one